No, I think um, a lot of what we see in large organizations uh, also depends upon what, uh, what the military is doing. I know when I got out of graduate school and I went to work for the Ford Motor Company, a lot of the people there in, in management and also a lot of the people that they hired were ex-military people. And, and they believed in having this strong, you know, military type hierarchy and everybody, you know, uh, pays attention to the, you know, to the, to the top brass and, and everything's in order and, you know, and it's, and that's the way it should be. And I think today, uh, the military has realized that that's not the way that they fight wars anymore. And I think the, the, the U S found that in, uh, in Afghanistan and they found that, uh, in Iraq and they, and they, um, and so that thinking now that the military where they had to adapt to, um, to be successful in their conflicts is now going to still be going into org organizations. And I think you're going to have military people thinking that, well, it's not this big army machine or this big uh, air force machine that's, that, that's going to win things. It's, you know, it's that special forces group. It's that special team we put together. It's that uh, surge, whatever it is, you know, that we now have to apply to our organizational thinking. So we, you know, we put together this, you know, Apple basically did this. They put together this special forces team to, um, to come up with this, um, with this, with the iPod originally, because the iPod was actually an, an idea that came in from the outside and, um, two former colleagues started talking. One was working for Apple and the other one was not. And they came up with some ideas and they put together some presentations and then they presented it to Steve Jobs and he said, okay, that's, that's an interesting project. Let's, let's, let's go. But it was a small team. It wasn't more than a couple dozen people working on it initially. So again, you have this special forces type orientation doing a very special project and, and seeing how it works. And then once they're successful, then you could move in, you know, the other army to take care of whatever, you know, part of the land they liberated or, or what. So, um, you know, that's the same with, with the iPod. Once they decide, you know, once they designed it and they saw that it, it made sense and, and all that, then they could bring in their, you know, their, their manufacturing knowledge and, and all that to start making it and their marketing and, and, and so on. But they needed this, this special forces, this special unit that was able to uh, make things happen. And, and they found that that was true not only in, uh, in Afghanistan, but it was true in Iraq. And, and they're, you know, they're finding that that's, that's true in a lot of places. So that thinking, as as large organizations continue to hire <clears throat> ex-military people, that thinking will come into organizations, and and a lot of these um, you know special project teams and and the ability to adapt quickly to a changing situation will become more the norm than they were back uh, you know twenty years ago when I was in large org organizations 30 years ago, 20, 30 years ago.